President Biden's age bags a hot topic on the campaign trail after Democratic challenger Dean Phillips hammers this point on a Christmas Day tweet. Let's bring in Sarah Bedford from the Washington Examiner to chat a little bit about this. Wonderful to have you with us here as we're in the cusp of a new year. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I think I should get to that tweet so we know kind of give us some insight into what we're talking about. It's kind of a funny one. He says, imagine waking up January 21st, 2025 with a president who grew up listening to you two and watching MTV on color television. Uh, to be fair, that's Gen X, right? So I guess we qualify. I don't know. Um, your thoughts on, on kind of the latest little dig on the president's age from one competitor at least. Well, the concerns about Joe Biden's age are, are universal. I mean, it might be the only nonpartisan issue left in this country that everyone, left, right, and center, agrees upon, which is that Joe Biden's uh, age makes his ability to do the job of president a, a really open question. And it's hard to believe with the state of the economy and the border and divisions culturally in this country that Joe Biden's age remains his biggest vulnerability. But polls show that that is what a majority of voters are concerned about, is Joe Biden's physical and cognitive ability to do the job of president. So any competitor who wants to have any hope of questioning Joe Biden's legitimacy, whether that's from, you know, outside the Democratic Party, a Republican challenger or a primary challenger like Dean Phillips will need to confront Joe Biden's age. And the White House and Biden's team, his campaign, have done very little to answer questions that voters have about whether Joe Biden is still capable of being president. That does president. raise a great point and a great comparison as well. Uh, the, as far as the average number of press conferences, uh, President Biden is way, way below his predecessors as far as taking those questions, those hard questions from the press on the fly. Uh, you can see some of those numbers there. And and his people have been accused, both his campaign folks and at the White House, of kind of hiding him away to a certain extent. When we see something like this, uh, is there some credence to that? Yeah, his lack of visibility really deepens the questions about his age. The press, the White House has not made him available to the press, whether in press conferences. And Joe Biden has done very few interviews this year. You could count them on one hand. You look at his predecessor, who is similar in age, but the same questions don't exist about his ability to do the job. Donald Trump gave dozens of interviews every year. Joe Biden isn't doing that. The White House has continued to treat Joe Biden's age as sort of a, a talking points issue. If they just get the right combination of talking mm. points, they can put the problem of Joe Biden's old age to rest. It's not really that. They need to be able to show that Joe Biden is still capable of doing the job and the fact that they haven't done that, and that's really the only solution to this, I, yeah. I think uh, does raise legitimate concerns about whether it's even possible. Yeah, he's dealing with some challenging approval ratings as well. Now on the other side of the aisle, real quick, Vivek Ramaswamy uh, had, had kind of his moment in the sun along the course of the campaign trail, but now he's pulling uh, the, the money for the television ads, and here we are just a little bit ahead of the New Hampshire primaries, the Iowa caucuses right around the corner in 2024. Your thoughts as we're looking at the race, where he stands and as well as the competitors as this with just a few weeks to shake things out. Yeah, you know, Vivek Ramaswamy kind of reminds me of someone like a Ben Carson in 2016 who had his moment in the sun sort of surging in the polls way early in the primary before it had any sort of meaningful impact. And then by the time the Iowa caucuses rolled around, he wasn't really a significant player. I mean, in the real clear politics national average, Vivek Ramaswamy is pulling more than 50 points behind Donald Trump. And frankly, so is everyone else. So at this point, it's really hard to see any candidate changing the dynamic when we're now looking at we're less than three weeks away from the Iowa caucus. Yeah, we'll see if things look considerably different by mid-February. We shall see. Sarah Bradford, thank you so much for joining us. Happy New Year to you. We really appreciate your insights. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.